In this video, I want to say something about um, making an, an equation uh, dimensionless. That's called non-dimensionalization. Um, for an example, I'll use this uh, equation which governs the oscillation of a pendulum. Um, if you look at this equation, there's the mass of the pendulum, the length of the rod connecting the mass to the pivot point, um, there's time. We're taking the second derivative of the angle with respect to time. There's a friction coefficient, c. There's a gravity, the gravitational acceleration. Uh, if you're on Earth, it's 9.8 meters per second squared in the units of meters and seconds, but maybe you're running an experiment on Jupiter or Mars, right? So g could be considered a parameter. And then you have an external force, so it has an amplitude f naught, and it has a frequency omega. So if you look at this equation, you have a lot of parameters. You have m, l, c, uh, g, f naught, and omega. You have six parameters. But those parameters have dimensions. And um, if you then uh, do what we say, we non-dimensionalize this equation, it's possible to reduce those six parameters into a smaller set. Uh, when you do that, then you can, if you were saying exploring the solutions to this equation, you have a fewer number of parameters that you need to explore. And also another very important uh, point may be that the non-dimensional equation here may be equivalent to other physical systems provided you also non-dimensionalize those equations associated with the other physical systems. So how do you non-dimensionalize equation? You need to know the units of the various things. So you need, first of all, you need to have the fundamental units. Um, those are things like uh, the length, the time, the mass. Um, here, the fundamental units are going to be a mass. And we're going to denote the units of mass by m. m just means mass. It could be kilograms. It could be pounds. It's not really relevant to what we're doing here, what is the precise unit of the mass. The mass could be in units of the weight of this pen. That's a valid unit for mass. So we just call mass m. We have length uh, l. So we denote the unit of length by l. Again, meters, feet, the length of this pen. That's a valid unit of length also. And then we have time. And we denote the units of time by t. Seconds, minutes, hours, days, years, these are all valid units of time. Okay, then you can ask what are the units of the different terms here. Um, for instance, what is the units of one of the terms in this expression? So we use this symbol, bracket symbol. What are the units of a mass, m, times the length, l, times the second derivative of the angle with respect to time. The angle itself doesn't have units. The angle is supposed to be in radians. Radians are pure numbers. There are two pi radians in a circle. Radians doesn't have units. So we can do things like take the sine of an angle. The angle does, is a pure number. So what are the units of ML theta double dot? So this symbol here means uh, that question. There's a mass, there's a length, and then the, there's a d squared theta dt squared. So there's a t squared in the denominator, right? Every time you take the derivative with respect to time, you introduce a time in the denominator. So the units of this expression, this term in this equation, is a mass times a length times a time to the minus 2 power, right? ML divided by T squared. That happens to have units of force. Um, a very fundamental 
understanding of physical equations is that a physical equation is only valid if every term in that equation has the same units. So ML theta double dot has to have the same units as CL theta dot, has to have the same units as MG sine theta, and the same units as F naught cosine omega t. The units across an equation always have to be the same. Otherwise, it's not a valid uh, physical equation. So we know the units of mass, we know the units of length, we know the units of time. We have this damping parameter C here, so we can figure out what are the units of C, right? So we have a, a length divided by a time. So in order to match the terms in this equation, we need a mass divided by a time. So the units of C is math mass per unit time or mass times t to the minus one, right? And then we have C L will be M L and then uh, d theta dt is one over t. So it matches the terms, right? Um, similarly, G, that's the gravitational acceleration. Uh, we know what the units have to be if we match the terms then it would be a length per unit time squared. So L T to the minus two, right? You know G is 9.8 meters per second squared on the earth, so it's a length per time squared, or length times T to the minus two. And then uh, F naught and omega, let me squeeze that in here. The units of uh, F naught, this is our force, has to match the units of ML theta double dot, so it's ML T to the minus two, and the units of omega has to make the argument of cosine dimensionless, so the units of omega has to be T to the minus one. Okay, um, now that we're familiar with what the units of everything is in this equation, we can try to make a dimensionless form of this equation. Um, let's divide through by ML. So then we have um, theta double dot plus divide through by ML, C over M, theta dot um, plus G over L sine theta. And that's equal to uh, F naught over ML times cosine omega T. Okay, so how do we make this equation uh, dimensionless? Um, the only uh, <coughs> independent variable, and the, so the independent variable is T, the dependent variable is theta. Theta is already dimensionless in radians. Um, so T is the only variable that we need to make dimensionless. Uh, we have to choose how to measure time. We make this equation dimensionless by choosing how to measure time. There are actually uh, several choices on how to do that, but the, a common choice would be to use this uh, combination of G divided by L. So G divided by L has units of one over time squared, right? G divided by L has units of one over time squared. If you uh, remember, if you know about a simple harmonic oscillator, um, uh, G over L is the, uh, or the square root of G over L would be the Nash the natural frequency of a simple harmonic oscillator provided that sine theta was approximately theta. So that's something I will talk about in the, in the course. But here we just need to know that G over L has units of uh, T to the minus two. So we can define a uh, omega naught. Remember omega has units of one over T. So we can define omega naught to be the uh, square root of G over L, which also has units of one over T. 
we can then use omega naught to make time non-dimensional. So we can define the time tau, which will be our dimensionless time, equal to omega naught times t. Okay? So t has units of time. Omega naught has units of 1 over time. So tau is dimensionless, our dimensionless time. What that means is that when tau goes from 0 to 1, t goes from 0 to 1 over omega naught. So we're using 1 over omega naught then as our unit of time. If we do that, we need to replace the derivatives. So we can write uh, something like um, d theta dt, right? The first derivative of theta. We can write that as d theta d tau d tau dt using the chain rule. Chain rule. d tau dt is just omega. So this is just omega naught, I should say. d tau dt is omega naught. So this, this is just omega naught times d theta d uh, tau, okay? Um, you can go through the chain rule. You can do a shortcut. You just replace t by tau divided by omega naught. You treat this thing like a fraction. You uh, substitute t equals tau over omega naught, and you pop up an omega naught there, okay? Uh, similarly, the second derivative so theta double dot, the second derivative, is going to be omega naught squared times d squared theta d tau squared. Okay, so we take our uh, dimensional differential equation here, and we replace it by a dimensionless equation. So we have um, the equation then will be omega naught squared times d squared theta d tau squared plus uh, c omega naught over m times d theta d tau, right, plus omega naught squared sine theta equals our right-hand side. So it's equal to f naught over m l times cosine, and then we, we, we replace t by tau over omega naught, so that becomes omega over omega naught times tau, right? So omega over omega naught is a dimensionless uh, parameter, right? It's basically omega in units of omega naught. Okay. What do we have left to do? Uh, we divide through by omega naught squared, and we end up then with the dimensionless differential equation. So that will look like uh, d squared theta d tau squared plus divide through by omega naught squared. So we have a c over m omega naught d theta d tau plus sine theta. The sine theta term is cleared. That's because we used the term in front of sine theta to make our time non-dimensional, the g over l. So we've cleared that term. And then that's equal to f naught over ml omega naught squared. And then we have our cosine omega over omega naught times tau. Okay? That's our dimensionless equation. There are, um, now there are these groupings of dimensional parameters, c over m omega naught, and this one, f naught over ml omega naught squared, and this one. And we can write this equation then as d squared theta d tau squared plus call this thing alpha d theta d tau plus sine theta and then call this term gamma 
and then call the inside beta, beta tau. Okay. These are what are called dimensionless, dimensionless parameters. Okay. We have our alpha, we have our gamma, and we have our beta. Okay, what have we done? We started with a, an equation that had um, six parameters, M, L, C, G, F naught, and omega. And by non-dimensionalizing the equation, we end up with a final equation that has only three parameters, alpha, gamma, and beta. The reason we were able to go from six to three is because there are three fundamental units in this problem, mass, length, and time. So six minus three gives us three. That has a uh, funny name. It's called the Buckingham Pi Theorem. It's uh, interesting to learn about that, but actually in practice, uh, engineers uh, don't really need to use this theorem. What they need to do is know how to non-dimensionalize an equation. Believe me, if you're doing a numerical solution, you don't want to deal with six parameters when you can deal with only three. Let me review. <clears throat> In this video, I'm trying to show you how if you have a physical problem where everything has units, you can uh, redefine your variables to be uh, dimensionless so that you can reduce that physical problem with so many parameters to a lot fewer parameters and all of the parameters are dimensionless. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope as engineers you have a lot of use with this uh, new knowledge. <laughs>